Hi guys, welcome to our Sudhirneet Biology Academy. Today, we will take up an, another important chapter on MCQ in eye and ear. So it's a very important video. Each and everything what I am going to tell you is a MCQ. They can be asked anyway. So, regarding the eye and ear, this lecture will be based on the MCQ point of view. So, each one will be a MCQ question. Now, let us begin. Let us take first the parts of eye and function. First, sclera, that is the outermost layer of the eye. It protects and supports the eyeball. So the function of sclera, the outermost layer of eye is the protection and gives support to the eyeball. Number two, cornea. The sclera in front of the eye becomes cornea. What is the function of cornea that refracts the light rays? When the light falls on the eye, the cornea refracts the light rays. Number three, choroid. So, sclera is the outermost layer. Choroid is the second layer, middle layer. Function of choroid is absorption of light. The choroid layer absorbs the light. Then coming to ciliary body. So, the choroid infant, it becomes ciliary body and iris. So what is the function of ciliary body? It holds the lens in position. By the ciliary bodies, the lens is in position. The ciliary body holds the uh, eye lens in position. Number two, it helps in accommodation of the eye to see the near objects and to see the uh, for objects, it gives, helps the height for accommodation. Then iris. So iris is a part of this choroid layer. It has got circular and radial muscles. This iris regulates the light entry. When the light comes, it regulates the light entry. Dark light or dim light or bright light, everything depends on the iris that regulates the light entry. And then pupil, that is the um, in, uh, center part of the opening, small pupil that admits light through the pupil only, the light can come into the eye. Then third layer, innermost layer is retina. Retina contains the sensory receptors, rods and cones for sight. It is the layer of sight. So sclera and then it forms cornea in front. Second layer choroid, it forms ciliary body and iris and people and third layer retina. So up to this we have seen the functions. Now, I told you the retina contains the sensory receptors. What are they? Rods and cones. Rod cells and cone cells. The rods is, are responsible for the black and white vision. If you see in darkness, that is for that is by the rods. Then what is the function of cones? Cones are responsible for color vision. So I already told you in my uh, previous lecture that there are three basic colors. I told you that three basic colors combine to form the whole other colors. And then fovea. So fovea is the region of the retina actually where the cones are more, wraps are absent, wherein the resolution of the sight will be the highest. So it is responsible for the acute vision. The brightest vision you can see in the fovea region where cones are present, rods are absent. 
and then what is the function of the eye lens eye lens is a convex lens it refracts and focuses the light rays when the light enters into the eye the lens refracts refraction takes place and it focuses the light rays on the retina then humors aqueous humor and the vitreous humor so where are they present between cornea and the lens before the aqueous humor and between the uh, lens and the retina you get the vitreous humor what are the functions they are the uh, liquid like gel like structures they actually transmit light rays transmit the light rays when the light enters to the pupil it it is transferred by the aqueous humor and the vitreous humor and another thing it supports the eyeball it maintains the vitreous humor maintains the uh, eye pressure and maintains the uh, eyeball structure supports the eyeball and finally the optic nerve the optic nerve transmit the impulses from retina to the brain so it takes the impulses from the the light impulses from the retina to the brain so these are all the parts of the eye and their functions each one will be can be asked in the mcq right so be clear i hope it is clear that the parts of eyes and their functions each one will be uh, can be asked in uh, mcq so in this uh, class at least uh, at least minimum 10 mcqs should be there then coming to next parts of the ear and function coming to ear there are three parts one outer ear middle ear and inner ear the outer ear contains two parts the pinna and the auditory canal what is the and then you must know the medium the sound waves have to pass through for that it needs a medium outer ear for outer ear the medium is ear for middle ear the medium is also ear whereas in inner ear the medium is fluid through fluid it moves through perilymph and endolymph the waves are transmitted right the pinna collects the sound waves though the our pinna collects the sound waves and the auditory canal filters the air then coming to the middle ear it gets it has got three parts one tympanic membrane and then three ossicles malleus incus and stapes and eustachian canal that is also called as the auditory tube the tympanic membrane actually is a part of outer ear and middle ear the auditory canal ends in the tympanic membrane what is the function of tympanic membrane it generate the sound waves when the sound comes and hit the tympanic membrane that generates the sound waves and then touching the tympanic membrane there are three ossicles malleus touching the tympanic membrane and stapes touching the oval window of the inner ear so these three ossicles malleus incus and stapes they amplify the sound waves the function of the ossicles is to amplify the sound waves and then eustachian canal auditory tube that is for the equalization of air pressure that equalizes the air pressure so these three are the parts of the middle ear and their function coming to the inner ear it has got three parts semicircular canals vestibules and cochlea one semicircular canals they have got there are three semicircular canals actually the semicircular canals are rotational equilibrium in function they are for the equilibrium 
they are for the balancing of body for rotational equilibrium this is semicircular canal there are three semicircular canals one lateral superior and posterior the lateral semicircular canal is responsible for the rotation around the vertical axis that is neck turning the head left and right so this lateral semicircular canal in the ear is responsible for the rotation around the vertical axis neck for example turning the neck right and left that is by the lateral semicircular canal superior semicircular canal responsible for the rotation around the lateral axis for example nodding the head okay the nodding the head rotation around the lateral axis example nodding the head and then third posterior semicircular canal is responsible for the rotation around the anterior posterior axis that is the for example moving the neck to the shoulders like this anterior posterior axis moving the head towards the shoulder so these three lateral superior and posterior semicircular canals are responsible for the rotational equilibrium number two vestibules they contain the sensory parts utricle and saculae they are also for equilibrium but they are for gravitational equilibrium when we are walking sp speedily or when we are running it maintains the equilibrium so vestibules are responsible for the gravitational equilibrium when uh, we are standing or running or walking that equilibrium is maintained by the vestibules and then cochlea is a circular canal that is the organ of hearing that is responsible for the organ of hearing we have already seen the structure of cochlea organ of quartae etc etc we have seen so these are the parts of the ear and their function though medium for outer ear ear for middle ear also ear for inner ear fluid perilymph and endolymph right now let us come to the mechanism of hearing first the sound waves come and hits the tympanic membrane the tympanic membrane is vibrated and then by the movement of the tympanic membrane the ossicles malleus incus and stapes move the stapes ends in the oval window of the inner ear so the vibrations from the stapes goes into the oval window of the inner ear and then the waves are distributed in the perilymph that is present in the scala vestibuli scala the outer layer outer chamber of the we have already seen the question on organ of cartae and that we have they were studying a whole structure of organ of cartae where you can see the outer uh, chamber is the scala vestibuli where you get the perilymph now the perilymph is vibrated and then the scala vestibuli and scala media are actually crossed by the membrane rais uh, resinous membrane resinous membrane so that waves are coming to the endolymph from the perilymph by the movement of the resinous membrane it comes to the endolymph present in the scala media chamber and then that vibration vibrates the basilar membrane basilar membrane on the basilar membrane you get the organ of cartae with hair cells the hair cells act as the sensory receptors so by the disturbed basilar membrane 
by the vibration of the basilar membrane the organ of corti is vibrated by which the hair hair cells actually bends and an action potential is created this is all we have already seen in the organ of corti so uh, already just now we are seeing the mechanism of hearing only so action potential is created by the organ of corti and that is transmitted through the auditory nerve to the auditory cortex of the brain so once again repeat for your convenience sound waves come and hit the vibrate on the and vibrate the tympanic membrane and then three ossicles malleus incus and stapes also vibrate and then that vibration enters to the oval window into the inner ear and then waves in the perilymph in the scala vestibuli and then waves in the endolymph by the uh, resinous membrane and then finally the basilar membrane is disturbed and vibrated on the basilar membrane the organ of corti with the uh, cells the auditory receptors are disturbed by which an action potential is created that action potential is taken or transmitted by the auditory nerve to the cerebral cortex of the brain and then brain knows the and hears the sound this is the mechanism of hearing so we have seen the parts of eye and their function the parts of ear and their function and the medium of uh, actually the uh, medium of transmission of sound waves for outer ear middle ear inner ear so inner ear outer ear ear middle ear ear inner ear you must remember the medium is fluid perilymph and endolymph in the organ of corti and then we have seen the mechanism of hearing so this is this class this video is a very important video regarding the eye and ear for the mcq point of view each one will be an will be a mcq question uh, minimum i told you minimum 10 to 15 uh, mcqs can be asked in this chapter or in this video from from this video okay so uh, i hope you have covered everything regarding the parts of eye and their function parts of ear and the function and the mechanism of hearing i hope let us meet in the next video till then thank you very much